like to try mixing some more flesh tones, this time with paints from Michael Harding's series 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. I'm going to try mixing various different combinations of earth colours and whites just to see how many different ways I can mix flesh tones and what different kinds of flesh tones those colours are going to create. I'll start with a pretty traditional combination. I'm going to use lead white, traditionally used for portraiture because it's a little bit warmer than titanium white. And with it, I'm going to put some genuine Naples yellow dark. Isn't that lovely? Such a distinctive colour. Nothing quite like Naples yellow. And to warm that up, we'll try a tiny spot of cadmium red light. It's working, but I think that's a little bit clean for a flesh tone for me. I want to just soften it down a tiny bit, desaturate it a little. A bit more white will help with that. But if I wanted something more mid-tone, I think I need to cool it off a bit. So let's try a little bit of cerulean blue just to take some of the power away from that orangey colour. That's working quite nicely, just a little bit of blue, too much it'll go greenish. But that feels really like quite a nice natural flesh tone now. That could work really well for me as a base and then I could mix other gentle colour shifts from that, make it more pink, more yellow, more grey. That could work really nicely. Something a little brighter to start us off, let's try the Naples Yellow, Genuine Naples Yellow Light, which is a more lemony sort of yellow to begin with. And we'll try it with the brilliant pink. I love this pink. It's got such a nice orangey quality to it when you mix it. That is quite loud, so I think I might calm that down a bit. Let's try some green in there. Try a little tiny bit of Viridian Green just to see what happens to neutralise that. That's giving us a, still a rich colour but much more natural. And with a little bit of white I think we might be somewhere close to a useful flesh tone there. It's taking a bit more work to soften it but the colour I'm getting is richer, would be better for a more tan skin. Well, this one could grey quite easily. I think this one is richer, more robust colour. I love these lead tin yellow colours. This is lead tin yellow light. I like to use it as a base. I'm going to try it with some Venetian red and see how these two mix together. That yellow tone is just making a nice sort of peachy tint with that Venetian red. That could be really handy for cheeks or noses, places where the flesh is a little bit more red. And going a bit redder still, let's try and mix with some alizarin crimson. This is actually alizarin claret I'm going to play with here and I'm going to mix it again with that Naples yellow dark. So we're much redder to begin with because of the crimson. It's so much more powerful than the Venetian red. A richer colour. If we try that with a little bit of foundation white to cool it off. The foundation white has some titanium with it, so it's a much colder white. See where that takes us. Combined with the claret, that's going to give us a more bluish tint. That could be really helpful for very fair skin. You get some really delicate, cool pinks in much fairer skin. That could be quite helpful. What a pretty colour. Going back to the lead tin colours, let's try the lead tin yellow lemon. Much stronger than the lead tin yellow light. I'm going to see what happens if I mix this with the very lovely vermilion, genuine Chinese vermilion. Gosh, they feel buttery together, they're lovely. That's a great colour. That's so natural. The softness in these two colours just seems to lend itself towards a flesh tone very readily. Still a bit rich, 
but it's lovely to work with. I could push that around all afternoon. It's lovely. <laughs> I'll try a little bit of Cobalt Violet Dark with that, I think, just to try to desaturate it a little bit. I like the Cobalt Violet, it's very gentle. And these two colours are working so nicely together, I don't want to be too hard on them. So I think maybe that gentle lilac in there, the cool lilac should. Yeah, that's great. Gosh, that really is feeling very useful as a flesh tone there. I could lighten it with some lead white if I, if I need to, or darken it perhaps with a bit more of the violet. It's greying a bit with a lot of white. Might need to keep up the yellow in there a bit. It's working really nicely with that violet towards some shadow colours. Gosh, that's a lot of fun. Right, moving on. How about trying the same thing with a yellow ochre with some lead white to get us to a nice creamy base to begin with and then some vermilion in there. This is a really traditional mix. It's been used for a long time. So lead white, yellow ochre and vermilion. It doesn't take much vermilion just to start to warm that towards something much more like a flesh tone. More white for your highlight colours. That lead white's lovely, it's not cooling off too much. You can see why they like it for portraits. And if I wanted to darken that, I might just try black. With too much ochre it will probably go green, but I can always put some vermilion back in there to warm it up again. So that's a really traditional flesh mix and it works brilliantly, you can see why it's been used for so long. I could just keep going and going with this, there's so many possible combinations. But I think the thing I'm finding is that these higher series colours are just lending themselves so beautifully to flesh tones. I don't feel like I'm working too hard to soften them. There's a natural, gentle warmth to them that I'm really enjoying. I can't wait to get going with some portraits. <laughs>